Good evening, everybody. Hanukkah Sameer. Hanukkah Sameer. Thank you. Okay. Hope you got launched with the first candle in a good way. Okay, looks like we're going to above. <clears throat> so, says the tour here, Mitzvah le'anichah le'mata mi'asarat fachim. There is a mitzvah to place it below ten tefachim. Um, what is ten tefachim? It's about waist high. So there is a special mitzvah to place it a little bit lower than that. And uh, there's a whole story behind this, by the way, why this is such a important thing to do, what the theory is behind it, whatever. Uh, but, you know, 10 Tfachim, like, it's about 80 centimeters. So if you put it below, you're doing uh, the best way of doing the mitzvah. That's what we're saying. Sometimes it's not possible to do this. Uh, why is that? Because the, the table is usually, you know, uh, taller than that. So <laughs> if you're using a table, you know... Uh, or you know the windowsill, uh, you know it's it's probably going to be higher. In most cases, you know, in some cases, whatever, you know, depends. Uh, so, therefore, you know, if a person can't do it for some reason, it's okay. It's just the best way to do it, you know. So, if you can, if you can arrange it in a way, when it's below that, it's good. So when is the, now we talked about, the, right, the the top, which is 80 centimeters. That's like, you know, supposed to be below that. But what's the minimum height that it could be? You know, you can't put it on the floor, right? Uh, so the minimum height, if I'm not mistaken, is like three tfakhim, uh, which is, you know, um, uh, three Tvachim is like um, eight times eight times three, right? Which is uh, twenty six centimeters. Twenty four. I'm sorry, twenty four. So it's twenty four. So you shouldn't put it below that because why is that? Because the Talmud says in uh, Masechet Eruvin that uh, if you put it below that. And we're talking about in general, not only in Hanukkah, but anything which is below three tefachim is considered to be like on the floor. So this is the reason why we don't want it there. We don't want it that low. It's like you're you're putting it on the floor. So we want it uh, below, you know, the ideally speaking, we want it below eighty, and uh, not more than uh, not less than twenty four. But if a person can't do it for some reason, as we said. So uh, he can um, circumvent that and put it a little bit higher. Um, so why is that such a good height to have? What's the, what's the reason for that? According to the simple meaning, uh, what it is is that, you know, the eye catches it like that. It catches the eye, you know? So in other words, 
you're just gonna see it more readily like that. That's what that's what it is. The field of vision adjusts more to that height than to any other height. So therefore, it gets noticed more. You know, that's what that's what it's all about. There's also uh, something according to Agada. You know, maybe I shouldn't get into it now. If you look at my videos, you'll find it there. You know, there's all kinds of interesting stuff that I uh, spoke about uh, regarding this halacha. Uh, but uh, that's the bottom line. Okay, so uh, that's what it says in the tour. Now it says Bet Yosef, <clears throat> Tanan. We learned over there in the Mishnah, Baba Kama Samech Bet Amudbet gets Hayotze Mitachat Apatish veYatsa veZik Chayav. Gamar shetaun pishtan vehu over b'rishut tarabim v'nichnesa pishtano letoch achanut v'dalka benero shel chenvani v'edlik et habayit bal bal agama lachayav hiniach chenvani et nero mi bechutz chenvani chayav. Rabbi Yehuda Omer, I'm not going to translate this because it's not really relevant to our subject. I'm just reading on until we get to our subject here. So. Uh, Amar Bener Vachanuka Patu. Ah, Amaravina Mishmed Rava. Zotomeret Ner Chanuka Mitzvah Lenicha Petoch Asara. Ah, so the Gemara deduces over here in the in, in Baba. In, in Baba Kama, Samech Bet Amudbet, that uh, it's the proper thing to do is to put the Ner uh, Chanuka. As we said, right below ten tefachim. That's the best way to do it. Okay. There's also another issue which you know affects this, which is that you know even though your table may be like uh, you know not too high or your windowsill, but once you start using your menorah, you know, and so therefore it gets higher, you know, the height. So you know when you when you add up the height of the table or the windowsill or the menorah itself, and the, you know the cup uh, and everything. So then it turns out, right, that uh, you're going to have usually the the, the, the candles are going to be higher than that. So we said, right, it's okay, you know. I mean, uh, it's not the end of the world. Uh, but if it's possible to do it lower, you know, if a person can handle it somehow, whatever. So uh, yeah, why not? You know, we can try. That's good. Uh, it's good. Good to do the mitzvah the best way. Okay, so that's that. So then he goes on. <clears throat> so then he goes on in the Gemara there. Amar Avina, Mishmei de Rabba. Says this Rabbi, Zot omeret, ner chanuka mitzvot enicha betoch asra, we already said that. Because if you think that it's above 10 tvachim, so I'm not going to translate this right. It's a little bit of a, right, a different topic there, whatever, but I'm just going to go on. So it goes on here. The Katav Aran. So it says the Ran, Beshem Rabbeinu Hananel, Ate Leamnu, Daik de Kaimalan. Kiravina. So it says, right, uh, these rabbis say that we hold like Ravina. Um, so the Ran says, right, that uh, we pass in like Ravina in the Gemara there that we just read. And same goes uh, for. Um, uh, the Rabbeinu Yona and also the Rashba. Adkan. That's the end of uh, that. The Chen Katav Rosh, and then Rosh also agrees. So we have several Rishonim here who say that the Halacha is like Ravina. Uh, so the Rosh says, "Afagav de Dache le Mitzvah le Nichal le Mata Mesa." So he says like this, right? The Rosh that even though. This uh, opinion of Ravina was rejected in the Gemara, deflected, whatever you want to call it, right? It was deflected, but nevertheless, the halachas like it anyway. Uh, so therefore, right, uh, that means that you should try to put it below 10, as we said, right? That's what it means, bottom line. 
Okay. Let's go on a little bit. כי נקרא מרבינה משמי דרבה, וגם איכא פרסום הנס צפה כשהוא למטה דדבר עשוי לאור, אין דרך להניחה כל כך למטה. או. So he says another thing here, right, the Rosh. Why is it a mitzvah to put it below ten tefachim? The reason is, another reason that we, right, that he mentions here, uh, is that um, since it's like usually not the place where people, the height, is, it's not the height that usually people place their lamps, Right, uh, so low like that. So therefore, it's more noticeable, you know, the fact that you're doing like some kind of a shinui differentiation. So that's another reason why it's um, it's proper to do like that below ten tefachim. Okay. So then he goes on. Um. וכן כתב הפירוש של רבנו חננאל, זאת אומרת, זאת אומרת, זאת אומרת, רבנו חננאל, הוא מצווה להניחה מלמטה מעשרה, זאת אומרת, מצווה to put it below ten טווחים, וכן פסק הסמג. So we see here, right, that here all the ראשונים seem to agree, the earlier authorities, that uh, that's the halacha, you know, mm, like we said. Okay. הוא סמג ועריף, all these ראשונים, רמב״ם, right, oh, so now, right, says the, um, says the Bet Yosef, so he says, but with the exception of these two rabbis, right? The Rif and the Rambam, they did not uh, write this halakha. Uh, in other words, they just like left it out, basically, right? So the question is why, right? Uh, why, would you, why wouldn't you write it? So that implies that they don't really hold that it's halakha. The fact that they left it out. They omitted it. Uh, ah, so it must be that they hold, since since the, this this opinion was deflected in the Gemara as we mentioned already, so therefore it's not the halacha. So we have on the one side, right? We have all these rishonim that hold like this right halacha. On the other hand, we have the Rif and the Rambam that don't hold like it. Don't seem to care for it, really. That's pretty much the uh, the setup over here. Okay, good. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, so he says, right, uh, Bet Yosef here, something interesting. He says that, so we see, right, that the Rif and the Rambam don't seem to hold like this halacha. But he says, nevertheless, you know, it's proper to do it anyway. Why, why is that? Because you're not losing anything, you know, because uh, if you put it like that height, everybody agrees that it's kosher, you know, so... He didn't really lose, lose much, so therefore, why not, uh, you know, fulfill the obligation according to all these uh, Rishonim? So therefore, says the, uh, right, says the Bet Yosef that, uh, you know, might as well do it. Why not? You know, if you can, as we said, right? So here's another thing, right, that if you can't do it for some reason, then you're going to rely on the Rif and the Rambam who don't really hold that it's Halakha anyway. So you got what to hold on to there, you know what I mean? Uh, if you can't do it, if you can, why not? You know, uh, doesn't you got nothing to lose. You only you only, only going to gain. So for them, what is the proper height then? Oh, never good. good yeah. So for them, we would have to you know revert back to our default right height that we mentioned. Which is, as we said, right? It shouldn't be below three. That's for sure, right? Nobody wants that. Mm -hmm. Right? When, and what is the maximum? So the maximum we're going to see, right, if I'm not mistaken, is like 20, 20. So Which we're going to three and three, range, no? the range, according to them, is from three to 20, basically. Okay, thank you. You know? Um, so 20, 20, uh, tf, um, hmm. Wait a second. No, 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 I'm sorry. When I said 20, I didn't mean, yeah, I, I said right, but 
I meant 20 amot, right? Not 20 tfachim. You understand? So, so amot is much longer, much, much bigger than tfachim. So the average, you know, there are different ways of calculating, but, you know, one tefach, uh, I'm sorry, one ama, which is like, you know, we call that a, a hand's breadth, well, not a hand's breadth, uh, like cubit, whatever they call that in English, whatever. One, you know, from your, from your, uh, from your fingers until your, uh, for, until your elbow, right? That, that's, that's ama. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so 20 of those, right, 20 amot, is the maximum, not twenty tfachim. So each ama is six tfachim. You know. So what does that turn out to be? Right, uh, you multiply, uh, right, uh, six times twenty, and you get the answer. Right, that's the idea. 100, 120. 120 tfachim. Right, which is, which is um, twenty amot. So. In conclusion, so it would be between three amot and twenty. Three tfachim, three tfachim, and, and twenty amot. Ah, twenty okay. amot. That's, right. Thank that's you. going to be the maximum. What's the reason why that's the maximum? By the way, uh, because above that, you know, the um, the eye doesn't really catch it. You know, like it's just too high, so people don't don't readily see it. This is the problem. You know, that's why we don't want it above that height. By the way, the same thing also applies, you know, to sukkah, right? When you make a sukkah, you can't make the schach higher than 20 tfachim, uh, 20, 20 amot, I'm sorry. 20 amot, yes. Same thing, 20 amot. You can't make it higher than that. Because again, right, you don't you don't want to make it so high that you don't see the schach. You want to see the schach. So therefore, right, uh, we want to make it that also the same, right, the same height as the... Um, Maximum height as the uh, menorah. So, yeah, that's pretty much the story there. So, basically, right, put it on your table, on your windowsill. You're good, you know? Either way. You know what I mean? It's pretty much, that's fine. You know? Especially if you're, uh, you know, if it's not too high, right? The, the windowsill, and the, that's even better, right? Even a bonus right there. That's a, no, good, no problem. Okay, good. So, uh, as we said, you know, you don't want to put it on the floor either. You know what I mean? That's sorry. That's not that's not the proper thing to do. You're not going to fulfill your obligation like that if you put it on the floor. Okay, so anyway, right uh, as we said, okay, good. So he goes on to say the bit Yosef, even though said so the Mordechai says something interesting here. He says, right, that nowadays, since we all light inside, you know, as we said, right, nobody lights outdoors except today, except very few, very few people in Israel. They do that today. There are some people who, you know, there who do that. But anyway, right, most people don't do that. Uh, so therefore, the... Um, he says that it's not really relevant here to be so stringent, you know, to put it below 10. Because really the stringency of putting it below 10 really applies when you're putting it outdoors. That's what he says. Why is that? So he says like this, right? Katav de'achshav shirgilu le'anicha bifnim n'ir'ed de'en kefida le'anicha le'mala me'asara de'lo pirsum. But says the Bet Yosef anyway, right? That Rabbeinu, the, the tour, doesn't really seem to hold like this. He doesn't differentiate between nowadays and the old days, right? So therefore, it seems like it's still a mitzvah to put it below 10, according to most of the authorities that we saw. So therefore, right, um, he's trying to say, right, that don't try to like say that uh, this Mordechi here, who says that uh, nowadays it doesn't apply to Salakha. Uh, don't do like that. Don't rely on that. That's what he says, right? Uh, so he says, mm-hmm. So he says, that's how the people who are like, you know, very uh, st- very stringent or whatever, right? very, very exacting, that's what they do. You know, they try to put it below 10. So you know, yeah, get your uh, get your measuring stick out, right? Uh, Eighty centimeters, and uh, 
if you can find something in your house which is below that, you know, like some kind of a pedestal or, I don't know, God, God knows what, some kind of a thing there. Uh, you know, maybe some kind of a little uh, night table, God knows, right, whatever. If you have something like that, or maybe let's say you have like some kind of a table, whatever, some low table. So yeah, if you want to do something like that, that's good. You know, we, we can we can go for that. Uh, yeah, so that's a, that's a plus definitely. If you want to, if you want to be stringent about that, but uh, it seems like to me, you know, that uh, nowadays, uh, from what I see, you know, just going around, uh, most people are not stringent about this today. You know, uh, just uh, I guess because it's not practical. You know, um, you know, because as we said, right, usually the tables are above that height anyway. Especially when you add the, the the height of the menorah, you know, whatever and everything. So it doesn't really turn out that way so good uh, nowadays. This is the you know this is the issue. So that's why most people today you know are not, are not really so uh, stringent about this. So you know, eh, what can you do right? It is what it is, right? Whatever. At least we can rely on the riff and the Rambam, you know, who don't hold by it anyway. Whatever it is. Anyway, uh, right, uh, but uh, whoever wants to be stringent, uh, it's good. You know, you, you, get, you get credit for that too, you know, whatever. Okay, very good. So uh, that's the story there with the Bet Yosef. Let's go on a little bit. There's a little bit more peace here. Oh, so now let's go back to the tour, right? Because now we're getting back to what we talked about before. Which is the maximum height, right? Which was, we said is 20, 20 amot. So let's see this inside the tour. So it says the tour like this Aval mala mi kaf ama. If you put it above 20 amot, as we said, right? That's too high. I feel bed diavad lo yatsa. Even bed diavad, right? What does that mean? Even after the fact, you didn't fulfill your obligation there. You know, so you got a problem. You got to go back and light it again because uh, you didn't do the mitzvah. The lo shalta be ena, because as we said, right? People don't readily. It's not in the field of vision. You know, uh, it's too high, and that's why the rabbis didn't want that. So there's no publication of the miracle, publicizing the miracle, whatever. So this rabbi says, That's only, again, right, if you place it outside. It says, but if you're putting in the house, he says, right, this rabbi, it's kosher, even above 20 amot. As we said regarding sukkah also. If uh, right. So he says, right, that it's the same thing as sukkah. What does that mean? Also, regarding sukkah, if the walls of the sukkah are also tall enough to get to the height of the sukkah, even though it's above 20, it's kosher. That's what he says. So therefore, the same thing also applies to the menorah. Same, same concept. He wants to compare one to the other. So why is that? Because when the walls go up there to that height, then the eye does catch it, right? The, the field of vision does get it. That's the thing. Um, okay. 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 So, but says <laughs> says the tour. I don't think really, you know, these two things are similar. In other words, you can't compare sukkah to menorah. Uh, right. Right, so he says over here something interesting. I'll, so I'll just read, I'll just finish the sentence. Right, so the, the tour brings here, he doesn't agree with this rabbi. So he says, you can't compare sukkah to menorah. Why? Because as we said, right, when it comes to sukkah, 
if the walls are you know reaching the height of the schach, so then you know it's 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 correct that you're going to see it better like that. Um, but when it comes to the menorah, right? How are you going to see it better just because of the fact that it's in the house? So he says you can't really compare one to the other. You know, it's like apples and oranges. That's what the tour is saying. So he says, and Rabbi Rami Rotenburg, right, who was the rabbi of the Rosh, right? This is like a uh, triad over here, right? So who, what's the story? Rabbi Meir Mirotenburg was the rabbi of the Rosh. And the Rosh was the rabbi of the tour, right? He was his father. So it's like a triad. So anyway, right, he says, right, that he was he was uh, stringent. What? As we said, right? What was he stringent about? He would put it, he would put it between three and ten, right? Which is, as we said, it's the best height. And that's what he did. There you go. So yeah, we'll um, we'll catch the uh, bit Yosef here. Gam zesham amar avkana derash rabinat the rabinatan v'rav maniumi mishmed derava. So he brings here the gemara the bit Yosef that brings this halacha. Lemala meesrim ama apsula. So it says over there in the gemara that if you put it above twenty, as we said, right, it's pasul. Kesuka, just like sukkah, or kemavoy, or like a mavoy, like an alleyway, which is talking about the laws of Eruv. Pirish Rashi, Rashi explains, Pesula de Tabena. So Rashi explains, what's the reason why it's pasul? Because it's not in the field of vision, right? It's not readily, uh, in, you know, and the eye doesn't catch it. Lo shal tabena, lemala me'asrim, ama veleka pirsum menisel. So there's no publication of the miracle, because, you know, the eye doesn't catch it. Katvot Tosfot says Tosfot regarding this. She'im hinicha lemala mesrim ama. If you put it above twenty, umi ata veinicha kemo shehu doleket she doleket. What about if he put it above twenty and then he lowered it to a lower height? Lo asaklum. That's not good. That's not good. He doesn't fulfill the obligation. That laka or semitzvah elai hichavenu veimatenu veichazor veitlikena. So says Tosfot something important, right? We're going to see this. Also in a different place, probably, if I'm not mistaken. So what is Tosfot saying here? Tosfot is saying that, you know, if you put it, if you lit it above 20, right, and then you lowered it, you didn't fulfill your obligation. Why is that? Because it has to be below 20 at the time of the lighting, you know? The lighting is the crucial time. So therefore, Tosfot says if you made that mistake and you lit it above 20, don't just bring it down. That's not going to help you. Put it out first, you know, and then relight it below 20. That's what you got to do. Because the lighting is a crucial element there. That's what we're saying. So then he goes on right to hear the uh, uh, Bet Yosef. Katav Rabbi Yoel HaLevi. This rabbi says, Tafka That's only if he puts it outside, right? As we said in the tour. So he says, I, I said, I found written the name of this rabbi. So he says, it seems like this rabbi is talking about a case where there's here airspace. So he says, the air uh, damages the eyes. Uh, let's see what that means. We'll see what we'll try to understand what this is, what he's talking about here. The en adam yachol leabit lemala. The person can't look up that high. Call much he said as much as he wants. So leze hevi raya, and he brought from this uh, source uh, right uh, proof misuka from a suka. The im hadefanot megiot the schach that if the walls go up to the schach, afilu lemala miasrim, even if it's above third twenty. Kishra, it's still kosher. The sharta ba'ena, and then uh, the eye, the, the eye can see it. Or bazen yeresh in makom lekushiata mechaber. Ad kenishano says. Therefore, there is no, there is no place here to ask the question of the author, which is the tour. Okay, let's go on a little bit. And he says, "V'rabinu mer miotim brug haya midaktek lanichal emalam yashloshim mishloshat vachim." So as we said, right, Rabbi Meir was putting it between three and ten, right, which we said is the best place. So he says, right, we already explained this before. When you put it below three, 
seconds on the ground, you know? So that's why he wouldn't below, put it below three, obviously. He would put it below 20. Uh, I'm sorry, below 10. According to what we explained, So he says, right, that um, um, we already explained why it's not good to put it above 10, right? Uh, he brings that again, right? The same reason that we already saw. And then he says, right, another thing, which is that um, the Rabbein with the tour here should have written, he says, he omitted something that, that was important. What? what that, that Rabbi Meir, regarding what we said about his opinion, he should have written it over there when he's talked about that issue, about putting it below 10. So, like, why do you separate them and put them separately? It's a, it's a technical issue. That not really so important. But anyway, right, that's the bottom line here. So let's see the... Uh, Kabbalah, Kabbalah, yes. Kabbalah, so when he puts out the light, because he didn't light at... Um, he lighted above 20, right? And you said the first thing is to put out the light and then light it again in the right... Right, you got to uh, put it out. Yes, that's the thing. You got to put it out. Yeah, yeah. Does he recite the blessing again or no? Of course, because you did it the wrong way, you know? So you got nothing there. You got nothing done. Okay, thank you very much. You know what I mean? If it was a doubt, then we wouldn't recite the blessing. You know what I mean? But there's no doubt here. For sure, you didn't do it. This is the problem, you know? So that's why you got to you got to bless again. But, you know, we are going to talk about that more a little bit, you know, regarding what you said. So, you know, we'll, I think we'll, we'll come back to this issue again, you know, because uh, there may be some details right now that I don't recall, you know, so we're, we're going to we're gonna redo that, because of the Shem. I'm not sure exactly where it's going to come up, but it's going to come up very soon, and we'll, we'll uh, discuss that again one more time. Regarding the blessing I'm talking about, right? To, to bless again. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. So I believe right now, if I'm not mistaken, that you have to bless again. But, you know, we'll we'll wait till we get to that point where it talks about that, maybe. It seems to me that it's like the loss of Mesusa. If you put it on the wrong side and recite a blessing, then you have to do it all over again, no? Yeah, for sure. If you put it on the wrong side, you have to, you have to bless again. There's no question about that. Because so when guess... you put it on the wrong side, it's pasul, you know, the Mesusa. Uh, so it's the same case here. It's no? a tricky thing, you know, when it comes to mezuzah, you know, I get, I know you ladies have experience with me because I helped you with mezuzot, all of you, you know? Okay, so <laughs> I, we've already had experience with this, you know? What so. are you doing right now? Oh, God forbid. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm going to yeah. ask, right? No, okay, what's the question? <laughs> okay, so that, that's not a blessing in vain? <laughs> what, to, to bless again? Yeah, if you if you but the first one is the first one was a blessing in vain. Yes, it was because you made a mistake, you know. So you wouldn't you just didn't do it on purpose, you know. What I mean, you probably didn't know. That's the whole thing, right? Right, but you wouldn't light and not bless. I'm sorry. What was that again? So if so, if you had to relight, you wouldn't just relight and relight them and not bless. I, if I'm not mistaken, as I said, you have to bless again in this case. Okay, thank so you. The rule is like this, you know. The general rule is when there's no doubt, you have to bless again. When there is a doubt, we don't bless again, right? That's the rule, you know? When it comes to doubts for blessings, we don't bless again if there's a doubt. When in doubt, throw it out, right? As they say. <laughs> right? So why do I tell you? Because, uh, you know, we, we've already, you know, had experience with mezuzot, you know, all you ladies. Uh, so, you know, you, you, you know that it's a little bit tricky, you know? The laws of mezuzot are very tricky. You have to make sure, you know, that uh, the rabbi knows, uh, or you know, whatever, right, where to put it, the, which side. We don't the know rabbi anything. studied these laws, you know, because if he didn't, he's going to make a mistake, you know, whatever. If, uh, or if he's not a rabbi, whatever, you know, whatever it is. Right? You remember when you had me put it on the one side of my kitchen, when it was on the video, and then when you when you saw it in person, you were like, yep, we need to move that. No, <laughs> what, no what happened was, actually, if, if I'm not mistaken, it was just the opposite, that, uh, what do you call it, uh, I I didn't uh, I didn't see that mezuzah you know when that's that's why I didn't comment on it but when I saw it actually and I commented because well, if I would have seen it I would have known that it's wrong but anyway right it was it's, because it's, of how you get into my it's kitchen in the past it's in the past yeah, whatever I don't exactly know for sure. I'm sorry 
it's in the right place now for sure. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. You know, uh, trial and error, you know, <laughs> you know what the sages say, right? The sages say a person doesn't learn the halakha until he stumbles on it first, you know? In other words, the fact that you made a mistake is what makes you learn the halakha. So it's not, you know, it's not so bad to make a mistake. You know what I mean? It's, it's meant to be that way. <laughs> Through your mistakes, you learn the right way. You know what I mean? That's the way it is, right? That's that's the way it is, you know? A person shouldn't be ashamed, you know, because he made a mistake, you know, whatever. There's no shame, you know? It's a, it's a part of the process, learning process, you know what I mean? You got to, you know, don't try to say you're perfect, you know, oh, I never made a mistake. Oh, you never did? Never made a mistake in your life? Okay, whatever you say, right? Whatever we believe you, okay, whatever. Right, whatever it is. Okay, so anyway, right, getting back to our uh Shuchan Ruch, right? We're gonna go to Shuchan Ruch. So uh So it says like this in Shulchanum. Right? He puts it above three Tvachim, as we said, right? As we said, if you put it below three Tvachim, it's on the floor, basically, right? You're you're mopping the floor with it. That's what you're doing, basically. So no good, right? That's no good. Um, as we said, right? Three Tvachim, what is that? Uh, 24 centimeters, right? Okay, so we don't want to put it below that. As we said, right? It's a mitzvah to put it below 10. Right? So what's 10? 80 centimeters. Which is about the height of your waist, right? Unless you're a very tall uh, tall guy, whatever, right? Tall girl. Right, whatever, right? Something like that, right? Unless you're a basketball player. So uh, that's about what it is. So, uh, yeah. So that's the best place, right? 3 to 10 is the best area, as we said. But if he put it above 10, he's okay, you know? He's kosher, right? No, no problem. But if he put it above, right, uh, 20 amot, as we said, right, he didn't fulfill his obligation. So, says Ramah here, right, uh, what we saw in the Bet Yosef, he brings that. So the Ramah says right here again, same thing, that um, if he lit above 20 and then he moved it down, he didn't fulfill his obligation, right? Because he didn't, he has to put it out first. So regarding the blessing, right? Let's just see what it says in the Mishnah Brewer here. To make the blessing, not to make the blessing, right? Just to make sure. Because it implies in the Shulchan Ruch here that you have to make the blessing. That's what it's implied, basically. It, it implies that you have to make it. So, Okay, so let's just take a look at the Mishnah Brewer here. Not here, it doesn't mention it here. Doing the next one. Aha, uh -huh, okay, there you go. Here's the Mishnah Brura that we were looking for. So it says Mishnah Brura, right? It says you have to bless again, right? That's what it says. Yeah, so the Mishnah Brura Paskins, you have to bless again. That's what I was, that's what I thought, right? So there you go, right? As, as again, right, as we said, the why what's the reason you have to bless again? Because for sure you didn't fulfill your obligation. So you know, you did nothing. You got nothing done. So therefore, you have to bless again. Okay, very good. So I guess we'll stop here. Thanks for coming. Be blessed with wealth, health, happiness. Bezat Hashem. See you tomorrow.
And uh, Hashem, keep praying for our great soldiers who are doing an incredible job there. Perform performing another uh, Hanukkah miracle there, right uh, in the in the south in the Gaza there. That cursed place, right? Gaza, you know. By the way, interesting, you know, you should know that Gaza is really a part of Eretz Israel. It's uh, you know, it's not really um, outside of, the, of Israel. So it really belongs to us, you know. Uh, sooner or later, we'll get it back. Did you see they put up a Chabad there? Oh, is that true? Chabad menorah. Oh, that's amazing. so funny. Oh, Chabad menorah. I thought you meant a Chabad house. No, they do. They have a temporary Chabad house, and it has a. Menorah. Oh, okay. All right. Well, maybe they can serve you dinner there also. You know, some uh, whatever. I don't. Some ganiot. So anyway, right? Uh, whatever it is. Ashkenazim, they're not going to give you some ganiot. Yes. I'm give you Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> yeah. Why not? Sure. So you know what he called, uh, and you know that Gaza. Is a place where they killed Shimshon, you know. So it's there was a tragedy there that occurred. That was a place where he, you know, he got he fell down. He uh, he stumbled right over there. It says it says in the Bible, right in the laws of uh, the, the book of uh, Judges, right where it talks about Shimshon, that he went there, right, and he, you know, that's where he met uh, that uh, cursed lady Delilah, right, who messed her up, messed him up. And uh, that's where they killed him. That's where they uh, gouged out his eyes, you know. And uh, then uh, he killed himself, actually, right? He he pushed the building upon himself, and everybody died, including him. Mm -hmm. That was in Gaza. That was a healthy. Gavot Harafis is the same yeah. place where Yosef's brother conspi uh, brothers conspire against him. No, no, no. That's yeah. that's a different place. That's a different place. Gaza is all the way in the south, you know, like all the way in the boondocks. You know, that's that's what Gaza is, but that place that you're talking about is like uh, more more north. Uh, it's much more, much more in the north. Because I read that it says there that that area is also made people to sin. You know, uh, which area? The area where Yosef uh, brothers conspire against them. I don't know if that's yeah, the same right. Area. It's it, yeah, it's it's uh, it's a place which is destined for for a tragedy, right? Uh, tragedy, thank you. You're talking Sorry. about Shem, right? Shem, yeah. So Shem, Shem is like in the in the center of the country. It's um, like in the center. It's not in the south. Yeah, it's not really in the south so much. So. Okay, this is a yeah, different. Look. Our forefathers never, uh, you know, ventured into Gaza. They they, they weren't in that area. Mm. I mean, they they may have walked through there, but they, they never they never settled there. Mm, okay. I'm talking about Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov. They they didn't never settled there. But uh, Shimshon was there, you know. Uh, that's that's where he, that's where he met that cursed woman, you know, who messed him up. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, that's the way it was. Okay, All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.